Hello everyone, my name is Isakri, and I am here today to show you my vacuum reactor. I'm going to show you how it works, uh, show you what's good about it, and show you how to build it in a creative world later on. This reactor is of my own design. It is based off the one from the wiki, but I have added quite a few more elements to it and changed quite a few things from that one. Uh, as you can see, it's very compact. It fits basically within a 3x3x6 three by three by uh, area here. It does go actually up four blocks if you include this extra little bit here. This is only for the maintenance on the vacuum freezer. If you don't care about maintenance, if you have an auto taping maintenance hatch or something, you can't get that this early. But <laughs> uh, the one that automatically fixes itself or just duct tape, whatever, you don't need this. I didn't have this in my original design, so I'm still going to claim it's a 3x3x6, even though it's a 3x4x6. Uh, also, there is a second component to it, and that is this remote control circuit. This one is also 3x3x6, as you can see. Uh, it's a pretty small, fairly compact, and it is entirely remote. You do not need this to be close to the reactor. The only caveat to that is that you need it to be within 20 blocks for this thing to work. This is the tally box and remote comparator. If the remote comparator is not within 20 blocks of the reactor, it won't be able to detect it. But you can get around that by just having the tally box close, and you can move the uh, remote control circuit elsewhere and just have another wireless transmitter and receiver going directly from the tally box to this control circuit. But honestly, 20 blocks is a very large range. If you can't fit this tiny little bit of logic in there, then you must have a very complicated build. But anyway, onto the actual reactor design. Uh, as you can see, it is entirely self-controlled. Uh, I don't need to do anything. It automatically restocks fuel rods by itself. It controls its energy by itself. Uh, it's entirely autonomous. I don't need to monitor it at all. And I feel very safe having it. This is the middle of my base. Like, <laughs> and this is a nuclear reactor. I don't have any casing on it. I feel very safe. I don't ever expect this, this will explode. Uh, and that's one of the main issues that people have with vacuum reactors is that they call it dangerous. They say that vacuum reactors are dangerous and they're going to destroy your base, but uh, all you need is this one tiny little thermal monitor hooked up to your control, and your reactor will never explode unless you do something stupid like activate this manual override switch which causes the reactor to run constantly. Barring that, this reactor won't ever explode, and so that is one of the main cons that people have with vacuum reactors completely solved, just like that. Another con that people have is that they are often laggy uh, TPS-wise, because this, uh, not this one, this filter is constantly checking if it can, if any of these coolant cells are below a certain threshold so that it can pull it out and this one can put it back in and the reason why it's so laggy is because it has to check every single tick i've tried to alleviate that by using ev conveyor modules instead of iv ones like uh i think the wiki suggests using iv ones maybe so far i mean i'm only on a single player world so i don't know how well this would work for people on servers or with laggy machines. So far my reactor has never gone above 0%. It hasn't gained any units of heat and I've ran this one for quite a few entire uranium cycles. Uh, so it might be anecdotal but as far as I can tell this is completely safe with EV uh, conveyor modules. Even if it's not safe then the thermal monitor is going to catch it, and it'll shut it down. And you just have to go in, reduce the heat. You can try again with the EV, or maybe upgrade to IV if you're willing to take that risk. But even when I was running this with IV, I wasn't really noticing any TPS loss. 
So, again, that's more anecdotal evidence, but uh, it's up to you to decide. Personally, I have no issues with this reactor whatsoever. And so I'm going to now explain just very briefly how it works. I'm going to go over full details later in the build tutorial in my creative world, but just a brief overview. The way that this thing works, the mechanism that sets it apart from other vacuum reactors that I've seen, is really the tally box. The tally box is an amazing, amazing piece of machinery here, magical machinery. It is from Thomcraft uh, that allows this entire machine to work. If you look at the wiki, I can actually pull that up here. Uh, one second. Is that working? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> if you look at the wiki, uh, it has a very complicated IC circuit and Quite frankly, I did not want to get into building this at all. It seems very complicated, and <laughs> it, it was just a little bit too much for what I wanted to do. And uh, this is the final reactor. As you can see, it, it's quite a bit larger, and it looks quite a bit more complicated than what I have. So make that what you will. Uh, what I have here is, in my opinion, a lot more simple, and it's all because of the tally box. Now, people who are scared of Farmcraft, who don't like it, who think it's stupid, this should not scare you away. This tally box and a row comparator, it is some of the easiest stuff you can get in Thomcraft. It is in the auto magic tab. Basically, if you have a crucible and an arcane workbench and a research table, you can get this. Uh, I believe that redstone theory is unlocked for you when you get the book. Red Crystal might even be unlocked, or that might just be a research, but it, either way, it's be very simple. Red Crystal, remote comparator, tally box. All you need, right in a row. Very easy to make as well. Glass, quartz, red crystal, uh, more red crystal, a comparator, arcane stone blocks, a spider eye, and some aspects in a crucible. These are all like fairly early aspects as well. None of these are going to be very complicated to get. Machina might be a little bit harder to discover if you are only doing bombcraft to make this device, but even still, you can look up a guide online on how to unlock all the aspects. It's very easy, very, very cheap. You shouldn't, that shouldn't stop you from using this. Uh, now I'm going to briefly go over how it works. As you can see, the entire reactor is controlled by this one receiver, which is connected to the control down there. The point of a vacuum reactor, if you don't know what a vacuum reactor does or how it works, is the fuel rods run and they generate heat, and that heat has to go somewhere. And so that gets deposited into these adjacent coolant cells. As the coolant cells gain heat, they start to heat up and they need to be cooled down. And so that's what this filter does. This filter catches Whenever a rod a cell hits a certain heat level, it takes it out, puts it into the vacuum freezer. The vacuum freezer cools it down at the cost of a bit of power and outputs it into this buffer holder cell. And so once one of these gets extracted after it gets too hot, this buffer fills it instantly. No heat is sent to the chassis at all and all it runs smoothly. And so, if you wanted to make a vacuum reactor without automatic fuel rod replacement, that's all you need is a, like obviously a nuclear reactor, a filter to take the coolant cells out, a freezer to cool them down, and a chest buffer to put them back in. That's all you need. But if you wanted to be a little bit more fancy and have automatic fuel rod replacement, that's where you need the control circuit and this bit of tech right here. Basically what this does is you have your uh, redstone receiver here powering this line. What this line does is it allows the chest buffer to work. If that redstone isn't on, then these 
coolant cells will not go into the reactor. And what else it does is it powers this item conduit right here. Let me pull out my Yeta wrench. As you can see, we have an item conduit there, and we have a redstone conduit as well. So what that does is it allows these both uh, things to extract, both of these conduits to extract. Um, but what controls this receiver, you might ask? Well, that is this tally box. What this tally box does is it counts. It makes sure that there is 40 quad fuel rods within the reactor. And if there ever is not 40 quad fuel rods in the reactor, then it shuts off this redstone power. And so how does that happen? Well, once these fuel rods get down to zero, then they turn into these depleted uranium fuel rods. And if you look at the item ID, you see that these are actually different items. So that means that there, once these get depleted, then there is no longer 40 quad fuel rods in this reactor. And so this tally box is going to see that. It's going to turn this off. It's going to turn this off, which uh, does a little bit of logic. And basically what that does is it makes it so that the reactor will not turn on if there is not 40 fuel rods in there and will also prevent coolant cells from filling into the reactor. And then finally, it allows the depleted rods to get extracted out and allows the full rods to be input back in. So that is the main way that this works. As you can see, there is also a couple other control things here. This three is for the uh, heat detection. As long as the heat is below 5% heat, this is going to turn on and we're not gonna have an issue. And this four, as you can see, it's just connected right here, is for power. If I ever need power, this four is going to turn on and that's going to allow the reactor to run. This five is my master control switch up here. If I ever want the reactor to stop, if I wanna do some work on it, whatever, I can flip this, the reactor will not turn on. And that also applies to this, which if there's ever maintenance issues with the vacuum freezer, then this is going to turn on. The reactor will not run. We won't have any problems. The one exception that can cause issues is I have a manual override lever here. And if this is flipped on, no amount of control logic is going to save you. This reactor will run constantly. Nothing is going to stop it. So just make sure that you have this turned off unless you're watching it very clear, carefully. One more thing I wanted to mention before we get into how to build this thing is another upside of it, and that is the instant startup and shutdown times. A lot of power sources in Greg Tech New Horizons have slow startups and inefficient, inefficient shutdowns, like uh, turbines or engines. They have to slowly start up and get up to speed before they're running at full efficiency. These reactors are instantaneous. As you can see, we're running at zero EU right now. Bam, instantly up to 43,600 EU a tick, running at full speed, turn it off, instantly down to zero again. So that means that the power control is very simple. As soon as you get below a certain threshold, it shuts down entirely. And as soon as you get above uh, that threshold, oh, sorry, I had that backwards. As soon as you get below a certain threshold, then the reactor is going to instantly start up at full power, no downside whatsoever. And once you get above your threshold, then it's going to shut down again. So depending on what your power usage is looking like, this can turn on and off, on and off, on and off pretty frequently. But that's okay because it is 100% efficient each time it turns on. There is no loss to that. Uh, notably, fluid nukes are more efficient uranium-wise. However, they do have that startup and shutdown time. I believe fluid nukes are about twice as efficient on uranium as vacuum nukes are. But honestly, uh, once you're in EV, you can get uranium veins from Mars and uh, planets similar to that. IV has tier three planets, which has even more uranium on it. Uh, it's really not that much of a problem. I have a lot of extra uranium just stockpiled away. And even if you uh, don't want to set up like multi-block miners to mine uranium for you, there's this very nice bomb craft recipe that lets you duplicate uranium. Uh, I haven't set this up, but it is an option for you to look into if you want that.
All right, so let's get into actually building this thing. As you can see, I have two diamond chests. Uh, this one has all the materials for the EV version, and this one has all the materials for the IV version. Uh, as you can see, they are very similar, uh, mostly just uh, the fuel rod differences with the amount of reactor chambers also being slightly different as well. Uh, but those are the main differences between the two, and also the IV energy hatch versus the EV energy hatch. Those are really the only differences between the two. I'm going to be building the EV one just to show you how that is so you can get it going up and ready earlier uh, than the IV one. Uh, the way we're going to start is, of course, by building the actual reactor. Uh, this thing over here, this is meant to represent your energy storage. I have a, just a battery buffer, an EV battery buffer set up. Uh, you got your power in. Let's see, I'm still in creative mode. Set that to survival so you can actually see me building. Uh, you got your energy power in, and you've got a uh, power monitor. I'm actually going to set this to EU stored, I believe. It's the correct thing for that. Uh, and normal, by the way. So, how we're going to set this up is we're just going to start by building the reactor itself. The EV one only takes four chambers, and so it's a little bit cheaper than the IV one, which is really nice, because you don't, you can save yourself a little bit of titanium, which is very important in EV. Uh, we're going to place the chest buffer there and the item filter there. The item filter is going to be facing this way, and the chest buffer, face it down. Do not face it towards the reactor. Whatever you do, that will cause issues. The reason why that is going to cause issues is because we want to control when this chest buffer actually outputs. And we do that by having an export conditional and this enable with redstone. If the chest buffer faces towards the reactor, it will ignore the redstone and put things in here regardless of what the redstone is. This one we of course want to import. Uh, we'll put the thermal monitor right there. Now let's set up the vacuum freezer. So vacuum freezer is fairly simple. I mean, you set up a vacuum freezer before. If you've uh, done, <laughs> if you're in EV, you must have a vacuum freezer. So pretty simple stuff. We're just going to build it as you would normally. We're going to have the output bus on the bottom facing towards the chest buffer and the input bus at the top facing towards the item filter. Everything else doesn't really matter where you put it. Just have a completed structure. We're going to be using a an auto taping maintenance hatch because uh, just for example, I don't I don't feel the need to show you maintain <laughs> maintaining the hatch uh, like that. So we're gonna just put that there, and we have a complete vacuum freezer. It says it has problems. It shouldn't have problems. There it goes. Just updated, and uh, put the needs maintenance cover there. Uh, you're going to have to hit this with a soldering iron if you want the power to go through to the top. Uh, just build up a little staircase here. You can get up there. I believe I have redstone in here. Yeah, so you'll want a piece of redstone up there, and you'll want to hit this top one with a soldering iron. And it'll say, set output to strong signal. That's what you need in order to power that redstone. Uh, now... Let's move on to the uh, automatic setup for this. This chest is going to be where you put the fuel rods that are going to be replaced and where the depleted fuel rods will be stored once they're done. You need an item conduit here. We're going to have uh, item filters in the extract for both of these and we want both of these set without active without signal. Now for the filter, I don't have a depleted fuel rod. I could probably just cheat one in here. Depleted fuel rod. Where is it? Here we go. Quad fuel rod depleted. We only want this extracting quad fuel rods depleted uranium. That's it. And by the way, we want this set to in and out. And we only want this one to be extracting the regular full quad uranium fuel rod. So that to in and out as well. And because these are set to active without signal, this redstone conduit is going to control that for us. Uh, we also want this redstone conduit going 
to there, and up, just like that. Uh, now we can start working on the control circuit. So we're going to grab everything for the control circuit, just like that, and I'm going to do this one at a time. I'm going to use one wireless receiver at a time just to show you exactly how it works. So this is the NAND gate. Here is the output. We put the block there and the redstone torch on the block. Then we take a transmitter. This one is going to be set to reactor control. This one connects up to a receiver right here. This one is also set to reactor control. So once this is active, then the reactor will turn on. Uh, the next one we're going to do is a wireless receiver right here, and we're going to set this to heat control. Heat control is going to be connected up to a transmitter right here. This one's set to heat control, and notably we want to switch this to be on. So make sure that you click the center one, and this is going to emit a redstone signal if the uh, heat is below that threshold. So that's going to go into here, uh, then we have another receiver right here, and we take this one, set it to here. This is going to be our power control. Power control is going to turn on whenever this one, hold on, I might actually have this backwards. Uh, this one, I think, should actually be set to inverted. Yes, inverted. So this one is going to be on if we need power. Whenever we need power, this redstone will be on. And last, well not last, but uh, next, wireless receiver here, I'm going to set this to reactor master. This one, if this uh, signal is ever on, then the reactor won't turn on. So we're going to have a master control switch right here. This is just for safety. If you ever want to work on the reactor, you can uh, flip this on. The reactor will not turn on. And we're going to set up another transmitter up here set to the same thing so that if there's ever maintenance issues this will not turn on and then finally our last pair we're going to have a transmitter here and the receiver right here i named this one reactor switch uh, and what this is going to do is control the input and output of items so set that up and now the magic box that makes it all work Put the tally box right there above the redstone. Grab the runic whitelist. Set it to 24 fuel rods of uranium. Unclick this and click both of these. And now this is going to watch for 24 fuel rods of uranium. But it can't see that reactor right now. So what we have to do is put a remote comparator on top. Right click this on the reactor. And then set this eye right there. As you can see, this is not turned on because this reactor does not have 24 fuel rods, but put them in, this turns on, that means that this is on. We have our uh, 24 rods, so we know that it's working. We take those out for now. And now uh, I'm gonna put a manual override switch right there. We're basically done. We basically have everything that we need. I'm just going to quickly Fill the reactor with what is needed. We need 24 quad fuel rods. This is the design I used for EV. Um, it's actually not mine. It came right from the wiki. Same with my IV one. Uh, but this is one I was using in my world before I set up my IV one, and it is very well. It works very well. You only need a single EV vacuum freezer for this. Uh, which makes it very nice and very compact to use. Uh, we're going to put the excess coolant into the buffer. Let's see. Uh, now we need to set up power. I'm going to set up power here. So the reactor is going to output power from here into our energy buffer. And it's going to take power from the energy buffer and put it into... Just like that. Okay, so that's our power setup. And now, the all our blocks 
for our reactor are now placed. We can put the excess fuel rod into here. All the blocks are placed. However, we are not quite done setting it up. So what else do we have to do? Well, we have to set these filters for the item filter here, and we need to fix these coolant cells. So if we go over to our manual override here, we can turn it on a little bit, and we can see that the filters are gaining heat. I'll turn it off for a second, and we can actually see that the filters or the coolant cells have different heat values. Uh, notably, these four filters in the corner all have the same heat value. These filters on the edge have a different heat value than that, but they're all the same. Same with these ones up here. It's different from these edge values, but the top and the bottom are the same, and then these four in the middle are also the same. So for running our reactor, all of these coolant cells that are in the same like heat group, if you can call it that, uh, are all going to reach the critical point that we want to extract them at at the same time. So we don't want that. So what you can do is offset the coolant cells so that once they reach a certain point, like right here, I'm going to wait for that to get to 75, we can turn this off, we can remove this one. And now we have a new heat cell in here. This That one came from this chest buffer right down here. Uh, and now this one is offset 25% from these other four in the same heat group as it. So by doing that, we can space out when the coolant cells reach its critical value and get extracted. And we aren't going to overload our system, which is exactly what we want. So we can put this coolant cell into the filter. It's going to go through, get uh, cooled down by the vacuum freezer, and then put back into the chest buffer, just like we want it to. So now we can run it for a little bit longer uh, and watch these ones on the edges. There's eight of them, and so we want to uh, offset them by about an eighth each from each other. So that one looks pretty good. These ones on the corner we want to do, offset them by a quarter, and these ones in the top and the bottom, offset them by a half, obviously. So what should this filter be? Well, all of these... Uh, all of these cells are gaining heat at a different rate. However, they all converge at one heat value. I got this value from the wiki. It's uh, 57,120 is the heat value that we want to set this at. So we'll run the reactor until we get to 57,120. As you see, we actually got some temperature in there. That's because I took the uh, coolant cell out while it was running. We actually probably should not do, be doing that. So turn it off, let the reactor... Turn it off when you take cells out manually. That shouldn't happen if you're running the reactor uh, on like automatically as it should be going. But if you're doing it manually, you'll want to... <laughs> yeah, that just got replaced like that. Um, if you're running it automatically or manually, you'll want to shut the reactor off before you take coolant cells out. It's just safer that way. So, uh, and I'll show that at the end of the video that it shouldn't uh, cause any issues. So we're going to offset this one again. Offset this one. Uh, and you'll want to do that for every cell in the reactor make sure that it's offset from the other ones in its own heat group. And now we're going to watch this cell right here. Once it starts getting close to 57,120, we're going to uh, only increment the reactor by a little bit. See, we're up to 51, 52. Uh, wait for this. We're in the deep red territory now. Okay, now we're going to shut the reactor off. And so we're very close. So we're just going to turn it on and turn it off for one tick. Check the heat value, turn it on, turn it off. The heat value, there, we got it, 57,120. Now we take this out, it gets replaced as it should, and then we set this as the filter. So whenever we get a cell that's at 57,120, which all of them should reach, then the reactor is going to turn, or the reactor is going to get rid of that cell, put it in from the filter, pull it down, 
and cycle it back into the buffer. So, okay, so this is a little bit later. Uh, I've set up all of the coolant cells to be offset from each other properly. As if you look at the different heat groups, they're all offset by uh, enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to get them like perfectly offset from each other. But as long as they aren't going at exactly the same time, it should be good enough. Uh, and as you see, we are at zero core temperature. Uh, that little fluke before, when I removed it, moved the coolant cell manually, and we got some heat spike, as far as I can tell, that should not happen with EV conveyor modules because I think uh, they're just, I think they're guaranteed to be synced up properly so that uh, you won't ever have a reactor tick in the same time that it's trying to extract and insert. At the, uh, I don't think the timings ever line up incorrectly to have this core temperature rise. I'm going to leave this running for a bit. And I'll add a little segment afterwards if something goes wrong. If something goes wrong, assume everything works perfectly. So as you can see, we have the, uh, the, the all the coolant cells offset, working properly, no heat gained. We have the master switch off. I added a lever here just to simulate this needing more power because it actually fill, filled up. And so uh, if you put a lever here, then this will simulate as if we need more power all the time. And uh, so far, everything is running exactly how it's supposed to. So unless I have an addendum to make about this not working properly, that will do it for this video. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, you could leave a comment. I might see it, might not see it, who knows. You can also find me on the Greg Tech New Horizons Discord at Isakri, that is I, oh, it's the same as my YouTube channel. Uh, this is the first time I've made really any kind of video, so sorry if it's a little bit rambly, a little bit messy. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it in the comments though. But yeah, any questions at all, feel free to contact me on Discord. You can DM me, you can at me in the general channel or whatever. Uh, I'm going to be posting this video in the Greg Tech New Horizons Discord, so that's probably where you found it anyway. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, see you!